Good morning, Sunset Country. Welcome yes. to the show. We are so excited to be here. I'm one of your hosts, Deborah Crookshank, and sitting next to me is the other one, Dave Kane. Dave Mr. Kane. Dave Kane. DC squared. That's right. DC squared. Mr. Dave Kane. That's yes. right. Myth DC squared, I like yeah, that. A double dose yes. of the DCs. Every Friday morning. This is very exciting. They can wake up just, to us. Well, who I wake up to me wake every up? morning. Well, well it's wouldn't? true. Think about it. It's true. That's we right. should ask your wife about that, actually. Oh well, no, let's not go there. Let's not, go, let's there. not go there. We That's have right. a really exciting show for you today. Yes, we do. We have our first two guests. Yes. Mr. Um, Dave Camfield, the mayor of Kenora, is going to be on the couch right. talking to us about some summer events coming up. That's correct. He's going to come talk to us. The summer's coming. And we've got Melissa Jean, a local artist. She's going to show up and I think we're going to see some of her paintings, aren't we? She's bringing paintings. That's fantastic. Very exciting. Yes. We have a couple stories that we're going to share with you as well. We have a group of runners and walkers. Yes, the runners and walkers. You wonder what happens on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock when you got nothing to do? We'll talk about it. It's true. Yes. I know what I do every morning or every Saturday morning at 9 a.m., but... You're not running, are you? I'm maybe in my mind. Oh, okay. Yeah. All are right. you still running? Are oh, I still, I, I still do run. I haven't joined the lake run yet. Well. But we're going to learn about it. I might have to. I know we'll Shelly might talk a... me into it. Well, maybe yes. we should send you out. That's see right. See if you can keep up to them. Oh, I doubt it. We also have something yes. not so beautiful to talk about. Yeah, the, yeah. you can get up at 9 o'clock Saturday and go for the lake run. Or sometimes we have some people that are walking downtown and they're finding needles. It's we're, true. We're going to talk about the needles being found downtown. It's an issue coming up. But before that, we've got a few things. One thing we didn't mention, that the, the show is going to be a regional format. Absolutely. We're, we're filmed here in Kenora, but it's going to be more than just Kenora. We want to hear from you, Fort Francis, Dryden, um, Sioux Lookout, Red Lake, everywhere. Well, and you know what? People see us all across Canada. That's right. So I wouldn't mind. Canada. My mom. It's true. My mom might see. Hi, mom. I, you know, there. let's get feedback oh, from right. everyone. Yeah. We've excellent. got a few different um, fun things going on our Facebook page. You can always check us out at yes. Good Morning Sunset Country on Facebook. That's right. Where it can be interactive and we can get news, events, people. Who do you want to see? Right. Who do you want to see on the show? Yes, we'll talk about that. Speaking of a couple of local events, um, this Saturday, June 4th, Booby Nights, Nice. Huge deal yes, under the is. tent on the harbor front in downtown Kenora. Yep. Now, this fundraiser has been put on by Century 21 right. for the last, I believe this is the seventh oh, year. Seventh, yes. Yep. And we used to be raising money for breast cancer and um, equipment at the yep. hospital. Yeah. But this year, the theme is they always have really amazing themes. Booby Nights goes, goes nuts. nuts. Yes. So I think we are, they've reached their goal and have yeah. purchased the equipment um, they were looking to purchase before. Yeah. And now they're moving on to bigger and better things for the Lake of the Woods District That's Hospital. Fantastic. Also on June 4th, on June 4th, we've also got the uh, Kenora Restoration Day for the, uh, or Restore Day for the Habitat for Humanity. Habitat's working on towards its third build. And on uh, Saturday, June the 4th at 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, you can go to the uh, up by the Kenora Operational Center, up across from the Waste Landfill site, and bring by some stuff that you want to donate. Windows, uh, carpet, if it's newer carpet. Um, what we've got is you've got a sheet like this that'll be on the uh, website. You can go to that. It tells you what you can bring and can't bring. All donations go to the Restore in Winnipeg, and the money raised goes towards the next Kenora build. Thanks, Dave, for that. You're welcome. Coming up, Shelley Bujold had the opportunity to meet up with Lake Run, a group of runner and walkers, at Husky the Muskie in Kenora, Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Here's that story now. I started Lake Run because, as a family doc, I wanted to find a way to get the community more active for minimal cost. It's a community thing. You know, the family comes together or your team comes together and participates for a short amount of time. Everybody knows that they should be active and we should be active on a daily basis and that that's the number one thing to help our health and well-being. From everything from Alzheimer's disease to cardiovascular health and our, our sense of well-being. But knowing it is one thing. The idea of salience, salience is the word, and actually Putting it into action is the other. And that's why I sort of did this semi-structured event and said, let's do something. Saturday mornings, let's make it consistent. Well, I started 
running last year and uh, it gives me an opportunity to run with a whole bunch of people um, to get fit. Um, and I guess that's a major, the one reason why I'm doing it is just try to get a little bit more fit and, and uh, it's a great opportunity to be part of the community. On a beautiful day like this, it's, it's great to be out here. You get your adrenaline going, you find that high and you think, okay, I can't do this, but then it's like all of a sudden you can and um, it, there's an excitement there, I think, especially like, I mean, I'm not a little skinny person, so it's great that I can run and if I can do it, there's a lot of other people that can do it too. And this year we've even expanded it to Wednesday nights. The, the trail run series has started and we're gonna try and run that between Mother's Day and Labor Day weekend. With Labor Day weekend, the, the uh, Tunnel Island Trail Run being the culmination of the kind of trail run, lake run series. Everybody knows, hopefully over time, that 9 a.m. on Saturday mornings, anybody can show up and run. We even have people with forearm walkers from time to time and uh, people that have just had surgery show up and it's just about participating and it's making it um, a sort of structured community setting. Well thank you Shelly for that and if you've got nothing to do on a Saturday morning, meet the runners down by Husky the Muskie. Coming up next, like we said, we've got Mayor Dave Canfield. He's going to come in and join us. He's going to sit on this couch and tell us about what's happening in the city of Kenora. Welcome back to Good Morning Sunset Country. And as promised earlier this morning, we have the illustrious Mayor Dave Canfield, Mayor of Kenora. He's come to join us on the couch. Welcome, Dave. Good morning, and, Dave. And uh, here we are at the end of May. Summer's going to be starting. Uh, what's going on with the city? What kind of stuff? You know what? I mean, this weekend was unbelievable. I wasn't in town. This is one of them weekends uh, in the year I take off up north fishing. It was fishing was fabulous. It was the greatest long weekend we've had in years. Yes, it's been it has a been. long time since yes. we've had a long weekend like this. But I understand the BB and B that went on under the tent was fantastic. Apparently, the food, the cooks, everything um, got an A, an A rating, an A plus rating, and apparently next year it's going to be bigger and better. Um, just unbelievable, and, and the summer looks really good. Um, some of our new marketing strategy down into North Dakota and stuff is going to bring more people here. Uh, last year it was just jammed up with people. It's going to be uh, it's going to be even busier this year. This year is going to be a phenomenal yes. year. Probably, I'm I'm going to guess it's going to be our record year for tourism. Yeah. And uh, yeah. lots of events like we always have in Kenora. We're we're just looking forward to a uh, to a great summer and and uh, looking forward to having our all our summer guests back and our, yes. and, our, and our summer residents back yes. because they started coming back of course on the long weekend and yeah. just looking forward to having yeah. a great time. And they came back for a beautiful long weekend. That was just amazing. Our dollar isn't going to hurt us, certainly for tourism. No, the dollar is going to be great. Yeah. The American uh, economy is doing a little better and with the dollar being down, um, I know I've talked to some of the fly-in uh, camps and they say it's going to be a record year and so they're pretty pumped about it and, and I mean when you look around it's just it's great. The merchants downtown, the farmers market, of course, well, you know the greatest yes. event. Yeah. And we actually had some guests here from Fine Falls yesterday, the mayor and some councillors that dropped by and wanted to take a look at what we'd done because they had a mill that closed and how we redone things. And they were just flabbergasted. They just fell in love with Kenora, and uh, they want us to come out there and give them some ideas and how to rebuild sort of their economy and stuff. And uh, fantastic. Just absolutely fantastic. Well, we have 25 years of Harbor Fest this weekend. Of course, it's one of the main festivals. That's right. And we have a couple other different venues that are hosting events this year as well, like the Ski Hills having the country music festival out there. That's going to be fantastic. Yeah. 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 Yeah, really so it's and, sort of and the slip and slide. Well, that's so my the favorite. Slip, slip and slide. slide. We are going yes. on the slip and slide. It's gotta be the slip and slide. Me and Dave are going down together. Is oh, that's right. You and speedos. heard it. We're gonna wear speedos. Honestly. Matching speedos. Yes. I love oh my gosh. Let's scare the make customers. That away. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, you guys can go last. Gotcha. So with the city, the tourists uh, coming into town, the summer residents coming in. Um, is there going to be construction or anything in this year? Are we dealing with any of that this summer? Yeah, a little bit with the Kuwaitan Bridge, which okay. uh, we, we just had to get done, and yeah. it, it, it'll, yeah. it'll slow things up a little bit. But, um, you know, there's a good opportunity, too, when people are coming in, and we'll 
we'll make uh, people aware of this and, and try and we have a new, a new communications officer at the city. Okay. And uh, so what we'll do is you can even funnel people down the bypass and come in on the Reddit Road yeah, to sure. sort of miss some of that stuff. Certainly. So that'll be sort of an information thing that we're going to talk about as we get into it and you get into them long weekends when it's just jam-packed and give some people some options and yeah. uh, try and get that message out somehow. Yeah. For sure. That'd be fantastic. So we're going to get, we're going to have the downtown's going to be open. There'll be no construction down there. All the businesses will be happy. We'll have lots of people. Exactly. A couple of years now with, uh, you know, this will be the second year, no construction downtown. Really good, I think, for the merchants. And probably next year, we'll probably be back into revitalization, downtown revitalization. Yeah. So hopefully this will be another breezy year and good for the business and, and, um, and have a great year. And then next year, back into construction, I'm afraid. Well, that's fantastic. There you go. Well, we've heard it all time. from the mayor here. Mayor Dave Canfield of Kenora told us it's going to be an exciting summer. Come visit the city, see what's going on, and uh, we'd love to see you here. Coming up next, we are going to be talking about some spring cleaning. There has been some concerns with finding needles with the spring cleanup, so we have a story from the Northwestern Health Unit on some tips about how to take care of that in your area. We'll be back. Welcome back to Good Morning Sunset Country. Now, if you're in or around the Dryden area on yes. Friday, June 10th, there will be a screening at the center, 7 p.m. This is a screening on Lyme's disease. It is yeah. called Under Our Skin. I know there is an increased, of course, concern with this going on. Our region, it's tick season. Yep. Friday, June 10th, 7 p.m., the center in Dryden. You can catch that. Um, coming up next, spring cleanup. Let's be safe. Kim Morrison and Jeff Strachan had the opportunity to catch up with the Northwestern Health yes. Unit to talk about a needle exchange program and how to be safe if you find one of these needles in your community. Part of our harm reduction programming is um, safe needle pickup. And through safe needle pickup, we provide people with proper kits and the tools to safely pick up a needle. Within the kit contents, um, we provide a kit that comes in a bag, and in that you have a sharps container, so you have a proper disposal method. We provide you with gloves because we want you wearing gloves, and a pamphlet that talks about the five steps to how to properly pick up a needle, which I will show you how to do that. Um, there are tongs and alcohol swabs, which we would get you to clean your tongs after each and every use as well as hand sanitizer to use afterwards. If I was to go out on a needle call and I stumble across down below what we have here, um, I see a needle with a cap on but out of the wrapper, I see a needle with wrapper on and um, a cooker device. Before I actually pick up needles, I want to ensure that I'm bringing everything that I need to safely pick up that needle to the scene. And that means that I am taking my tongs, I have my gloves on, when you determine that your scene is safe uh, and you have your proper tools and equipment, what we recommend you do is put the sharps container by the supplies you're gonna collect, therefore you're not walking around with a sharps container. If um, I'm walking up to a scene, what you wanna do is ensure that when you're picking up, everything's by the end of the tongs and it goes directly into the sharps. Uh, you'll find things like alcohol swabs, there may or may not be blood attached um, on it. Risks are low, but you want to make sure that you're using tongs and not your hands. We don't want anyone using their hands to pick up any of this gear. Um, and for kids, uh, number one message is do not touch and to go call an adult or a guardian, somebody that can properly pick up a needle. But we also want to edu educate our kids on why this is not okay to pick up or touch. When we're picking up needles, the recommendation is to always have the pointy end facing out and that you're picking up on the safe end and that you deposit it directly in the sharps. And same with wrapper. A lot of what we find in the community are unused syringes that pose absolutely no health risk um, in terms of infectious disease, but we don't want them left on the ground. So yes, pick them up um, in same practice and dispense them in the sharps container. And once you're scene is clean, um, you want to close the lid to your sharps containers so that they don't fall out and you're good to walk away. And after you pick them up, you use the alcohol swabs. To clean the end of the tongs. 
Okay, so that these are reusable. Um, this is reusable equipment that you can put back in your bag. So that's what's involved with the Safe Needle Pickup Kit. Uh, we provide all these supplies. Um, we will replace supplies, and if you don't feel comfortable or if you can't get them back to us, we're, we'd be more than willing to come pick them up from you once you have a, you know, a full container. The whole point of these containers is that you can reuse the container until they're three quarters full. Thanks for that. Uh, next, we've got Melissa Jean. She's gonna come up and show us some of her local art in the city of Kenora. Welcome back. Canadian artist Melissa Jean is here in our studio. Welcome to Good Morning Sunset Country. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Deb. Great to be here. So we know that you are fresh off a camping trip. Now these are trips that Melissa Jean takes to go right on location to gather inspiration for her art. Where have you been? What did you see? And more importantly, <laughs> what's coming out of the studio? Well, I was in BC, so I was in the interior of BC this time, and uh, I went from about Kelowna area to about Banff area within with about 12 days. So I saw a lot of mountains, creeks, uh, rivers, something very different than what I normally paint on Lake of the Woods. Yeah. Um, I do a trip like this every couple years so that I can get out of my comfort zone, see something new, something different. And um, so I've been to Algonquin, the West Coast, different areas, uh, painting on location. Excellent. So was when you say get out of your comfort zone, this yeah. was a different style of camping, was it not? Yeah, it was, it was uh, camping on the mountain, very specific locations to where we wanted to paint. And so it was uh, completely different than what I normally do, but it was great. It's so good to be uncomfortable and um, you know, kind of do something totally different. And I love that. Excellent. So that was great. So Melissa, you can see her art in three different cal galleries in Canada, Winnipeg, Ottawa, and then of course, right here in Kenora, mm -hmm. we have an upcoming show too that we're going to talk about. How has your dream of being an artist sort of transpired over the years? Well, I always painted, but I never thought it could be a job until about seven years ago. Um, I started painting more and more and uh, got into a gallery in Winnipeg and it started selling. And there was a point maybe a year later where I thought, well, I'd rather be painting and I gave up my day job. And it was kind of scary, but it was exciting. And l luckily it took off. Nice. So, yeah. Well, do you have any advice for an artist sitting at home that potentially, you know, has some good pieces, but just is wanting to take that next step? to become an artist and do it fully as a career? Um, the biggest thing is to paint a lot and to get, to figure out your style and figure out what you want to say as an artist. And so if you're at that point, I would say just go for it. It's, um, you only live once and you don't want to regret it. You don't want to live your life with regrets later on down the road. Uh, a good way to ease into it is to take some workshops, to, to find a mentor, talk to them. How, how does the gallery system work? How does it work to sell? A lot of people are selling on the internet, yeah. which is great too. I mean, there's not one clear path, um, but whatever works for you. But definitely getting a mentor, taking the workshops to help um, you know, increase your skill level would definitely help. Well, you are providing a workshop locally, yeah. July 9th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you also have a show coming up. Let's talk about that a little bit. Okay, so the workshop is, is hosted by Falcon Trails Resort, um, which is close to Falcon Lake. Mm -hmm. um, and they are providing a catered lunch. It's a one-day workshop, 10 till 5, July 9th. And uh, I'll be painting with everyone outside. So um, Beautiful. we can all paint plain air, which is setting up your travel easel wherever you want to paint and painting the scene that you see. Nice. And so, how many artists are you expecting to have at that event? About a dozen. Nice. Yeah. yeah and then so. you walk around and sort of give everybody pointers and tips and stuff. Yeah, I'll be doing a demonstration, and uh, people can come up to me and talk to me while I'm doing that, and I can um, guide them in what they want to do. So it's nice. um, you know letting them explore the area through their eyes. Yes. And then just guiding them through 
you know, the color mixing and the various technical parts of it, as well as providing a bit of inspiration and answering questions and stuff. So, so these paintings that we have in our studio right now, you'll be able to see with your own eyes June 30th at Image One Designs right here in Kenora. Tell us a little bit about that event. So um, I'll be dropping the paintings off just around June 30th, a bit before June 30th. And there's, oh, I'm thinking 40 paintings wow. in total. It's a big one. Um, all Lake of the Woods scenes, some raindrops, a good variety of sizes from 40 by 60 to 12 by 12. Nice. So it's something for everyone to see. Um, so the opening reception of that will be June 30th, which is a Thursday before the long weekend, uh, 6 till 9 p.m. And nice. people can come and meet me, have a glass of wine, you know, uh, see the paintings, ask any questions that they want to ask at that time. Fantastic. Good luck with that show, Thank you. Melissa. Thanks, Deb. Um, is there any place specific that you have on your destination list that you would love to paint? I think, well, there's so many places I'd love to paint. Canada is, is so rich rich with things. I love water, first of all. So mm -hmm. for me, painting water is, is one of my favorite things to paint. So, and Canada is filled with fresh water, ocean, every, every kind of uh, landscape you can think of. Um, something totally different and out of, out of the box for me that I think I would like to see is Newfoundland. I think that would be the next uh, painting trip for me. But there's so much to paint on Lake of the Woods. I could paint here my whole life Nice. I mean, there's 14,522 islands, so if I painted every single island, I think I would be, I'd probably need about five lifetimes to do that, so. Is that where you spend your summers? Yeah. Is doing these oh, paintings yeah, sure. out and about on the water? Yeah, yeah, so we go out on the boat. Um, if my husband's not working, then he drops me off on an island, goes for coffee, comes back a few hours later, and I do a little painting, and, and then, you know, hop on to the next one, and... I mean, even with photo reference material, if it's a sunset, if it's happening quickly, um, right. I'll get that photo reference material from Lake of the Woods. Excellent. Yeah. I want to thank Melissa for being on our show today. I also want to thank um, Mayor Dave Camfield for hitting the studio and talking to us about what's coming up this summer right here in Kenora. So along with Melissa's show, June 30th, Image One Designs and her work drop, on July 9th. All of this you could probably get on your website, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. MelissaJeanArt.com. You'll have to go there and check her out. And why don't you come visit us on Facebook? Good morning, Sunset Country. We want to see sunrise photos. Do you ever paint the sunrise? Rarely. Rarely. But yeah, I, I have seen the sunrise. It nice. just takes a lot of coffee for me to get up at that hour and see it, especially in the summer. Nice. But well, I, I want to see it. a Melissa Jean sunrise oh, photo next okay. time you're I'll on try. the show. I'll try. I'll try. We have uh, lots of, of course, beautiful sunset photos in this region, but we want to see your sunrise photos and just shake it up a little bit. Um, coming up next week on the show, we have Maria Begdonis on to talk about road safety. She's from Young Drivers. So there's runners, bikers, there's young drivers on the road. So she's gonna come in and give us some safety tips about how to share the road this summer. We would love to see you here back next week. Take care everyone, have a beautiful weekend.